Welcome to your next video on radicals. Today's focus is going to be on dividing radicals. We're going to begin again with a property. And the property for dividing is that if you have a fraction underneath a square root, which sometimes we refer to as a tall square root, you are allowed to split it up into two small square roots. So you would just take the square root of the numerator or the square root of the top over the square root of the denominator. So we're going to focus on either side of this equation here to help us figure out how to simplify these expressions. And just like for multiplying, we have two options. Option one is going to be to simplify and then divide. Option two is to divide and then simplify. We do have some additional notes here. Um, first, we are not allowed to keep a square root on the bottom of a fraction. And so we have this process in math called rationalization. And so what we're going to have to do is rationalize each denominator to get rid of the square root. And it's just really a fancy way of saying we're going to multiply by 1. It's just that that form of 1 is going to change depending upon what square root is actually on the bottom of the fraction. Again, this is going to seem a little bit confusing until we actually see it in practice. So let's get started with some examples. Looking at number one, um, we had options to either simplify and then divide or divide and then simplify. Um, if we take a look at this one, there's not much I can do with the four and the three. Those do not reduce at all. So I'm going to go ahead and take this tall square root and I'm going to divide it up into two small square roots. So I have the square root of four over the square root of 3. Then I can go ahead and simplify a little bit. On the top, the square root of 4 is 2. And on the bottom, we just have the square root of 3. That is something that doesn't break down at all. Now here's where our special rule comes into play. We cannot have a square root left on the bottom. It's not considered simplified. So we are going to multiply by 1. It's just that we have to pick a crazy form of 1. And the form of one that we are looking at here is the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. I hope you'll all agree that that is 1. And you'll see how this is going to help us. Remember when we multiply fractions, we just go straight across. So I do 2 times the square root of 3. And remember, outside numbers and inside numbers don't get multiplied. So we just we leave them like that. But now on the bottom, I have two inside numbers. So the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is actually the square root of 9. And then you'll notice that in the denominator, we have a perfect square. And so that is something that can be simplified. So on the top, we have 2 square root of 3. There's nothing we're going to do with that. But on the bottom, the square root of 9 goes to 3. And this is considered our final simplified answer. There's no square root in the denominator, and there's nothing else that can be reduced. In example number two, there really isn't anything that we can do here because five can't be broken down. The three is outside the radical, the five is inside the radical. So we really just have one step here and that's to rationalize. In our note, we said we can't have a square root on the bottom. And so to get rid of it, we have to multiply by one. Only this time, our form of one is gonna be the square root of five over the square root of five. If you're not sure where we're coming up with the form of 1, we're basically just looking at whatever radical you have in the denominator, and that's how we decide. So we multiply straight across again. On the top, we get 3 square root 5. And on the bottom, since both of those 5s are inside the radical, they will combine to give us the square root of 25. And we're in business again. We've created a perfect square on the bottom. So the top stays the same. We have 3 square root 5. And on the bottom, the square root of 25, is 5. And we have everything broken down and simplified as far as we can go. All right, our next example, we are going to actually look at our two small square roots there. We've got the square root of 14 and the square root of 7. And we're going to put those back together. So we're going to take our two small square roots this time and make a tall square root. And so I have 2. And then underneath the tall square root, I have 14 over 7. Now if you think about what that'll look like, um, you just draw your tall square root and you've got 14 divided by 7, which is basically what we just had. But now we know what that is. We can just reduce. So we have 2 on the outside and then underneath our square root it just is 2. 
And there's no rationalizing. We don't have a denominator. There's no breaking down because the 2 is in simplest form. And so we are done with this problem. Now, with number 4, we have a lot of stuff that we have to do here. Um, we've got outside numbers and we've got inside numbers. So we're going to start by just separating the problem. So we're going to write our outside numbers first, and we're going to do negative 16 over 12. So we're basically just pulling apart our fraction here. And then those two small square roots, we're going to do the same thing that we did in number 3. We're going to do a tall square root, and we're going to write it as 2 over 14. Our next step is to reduce. Um, so we're going to divide the 16 and the 12 by 4, so we should have negative 4 over 3. And then our square root, we're going to have um, the square root of 1, 7. Okay, now we have a lot of steps here. Um, we're going to just bring down that outside fraction, the negative 4 thirds. And then even though I know I put together that tall square root, I'm now going to break it back apart. And you'll see why in just a second. So now I've got the square root of 1 over the square root of 7. On the top there, the square root of 1 is just 1. So now I can simplify that top to just negative 4. On the bottom, we have 3 square root 7. And if you think back to that first note that we had on at the beginning, we cannot have a radical in the denominator. So we again have to multiply by 1, it's just that our form of 1 this time is the square root of 7 over the square root of 7. You may be wondering why we don't have to do anything with that 3. Well the 3 is not in a square root and so that's just going to come along as part of our answer in the end. So let's multiply straight across. In the numerator we've got negative 4 square root of 7 and in the denominator we've got 3 times the square root of 49. We're almost done. We keep going. The numerator is as simple as it gets, so negative 4 square root of 7. In the denominator, we have the 3, but then the square root of 49 is 7, so we can simplify that. And then our final answer, we're going to just bring along that negative 4 square root of 7 on the top, and then 3 times 7 is 21 on the bottom. You still want to check for reducing. Um, we can't reduce the 4 and the 21 because they don't have a common factor. And we certainly cannot reduce the 7 and the 21 because the 7 is an inside number and the 21 is an outside number. So this is, in fact, our final answer. This concludes your video on dividing. Um, you may now begin your practice and make sure you ask plenty of questions. This is a pretty tricky section. Fun.